Now, as the cost of living continues to rise, there has been a drop in sales of vegan and meat substitute foods. Yeah, Ben has been looking at this for us this morning and is a factory where they are being impacted right now. Morning, Ben. Morning. It, it is quite mesmerising watching these fly off the production line. These are sweet potato pakoras. And we're at the Gosh factory in Milton Keynes. Uh, let me talk you through the process, because they're coming up that belt there. At this end of the production line here, Dusty is making up the boxes. Then they make their way along there, where Irina is packaging them up. About a dozen or so go in each box. She then passes the boxes along to Stephen, who's waiting there. Look at that. All of those stacked up there on the pallet, ready to go out to Tesco, Lidl, Pret-a-Manger. And uh, let me just have a quick chat to Dusty, actually. Dusty, uh, how many of these boxes do you get through a day? How many do you put? 5,000. Four to five thousand. Four to five thousand. Yes. And and how long have you worked here? I've worked at Gosh about five years. Five years. OK, well, we'll let you carry on making up the boxes. Um, there has been rising demand for products like these in recent years, with people perhaps choosing to uh, have less meat in their diet, either for health reasons, maybe, or to have a more sustainable, environmentally friendly diet. But the cost of living pressures mean that people are thinking again and perhaps buying fewer of these. In fact, spending on meat-free, uh, meat alternative and vegan products was down by £40 million. As a result, manufacturers are producing less and you'll find fewer varieties on the shelves of the four main supermarkets. The Vegan Society says cost of living crisis is affecting what people choose to buy, with a third of people saying that products that are meat alternative are simply too expensive for them now. We've been speaking to some people in London about how their shopping habits have changed. Some of the, um, the, veg or the vegan products are, are not great and they're not very tasty. Some are pretty good. If the quality was better, I would eat more. I think it is more sustainable to use more beans in our diet and more natural produce. And that makes more sense to me than to buy more processed things that are marketed specifically for vegans. With the vegan ready-made stuff, there are things that I will buy and I don't buy, and I think the cost of living definitely um, is, weighs heavily on that. Well, I still live with my parents, and they're all... My parents and my sister are all vegetarian, so I'm eating vegetarian vegan products a lot. We try out different brands. You know, it's getting closer because to meat. You know, I still eat meat, so I, I can tell more than them. But, uh, no, I mean, I honestly... The only thing... I think that's keeping me eating meat is that sometimes it's just a bit cheaper, you know, than the okay. vegan stuff. Well, let's speak to Jason Belmont, who's the managing director here. Uh, Jason, uh, what kind of patterns are you seeing from the business side of things as a result of what shoppers are doing now? Morning, Ben. Um, well, we're seeing overall, um, yes, there is a bit of softness in the plant-based market. But if you look back at the wider macro trend, I guess, depending what data set you look at, over the last five to ten years, the plant-based market has grown by about five to ten times. And there's a bit of a reset, but actually the last two or three months, the market's now recovering just a slight decline. So we think green shoots are coming back in. And the question that a lot of people are asking, uh, that, you know, we heard there from people in London, is why are these products so much more expensive in some cases than meat-based products where the costs involved can be much higher for the farming, the agriculture, the animals and so on? Yeah, it depends what area of plant-based you look at, really. Um, there's a number of categories within plant-based, but if you look at the meat mimics, so burgers, say, for example, or meat, you know, rat, uh, bacon rashers, um, the real story there is, if you take a burger, um, the meat market's been around for hundreds of years and the economies of scale and efficiencies are there. For some of the burger producers, um, plant-based burger producers, they're quite new and their sort of startup costs and investments are still there, so the costs are a bit higher. In time, as less players are in the market and those economies of scale will come, I think the prices will come down, but there is a bit of a premium still. OK, thank you very much for speaking to us and thank you for having us down here this morning. So. Uh, here we're seeing the real sharp end, the effect of the cost of living pressures on what people choose to buy and of course the knock-on effect on businesses uh, like this one. And thank you. We'll let you get back to your conveyor belt studying. <laughs> Transfixed. We'll see you again a little bit later. Thank you. It is it's completely hypnotised. It's very mesmerising. <laughs> He's having a great time, isn't he? Loves it. Loves it.
Now, as the cost of living continues to rise, there has been a drop in sales of vegan and meat substitute foods. Ben is looking at this for us this morning and joins us from the production line. Morning, Ben. Hello. Yeah, good morning. We're at the Gosh Vegan factory in Milton Keynes. We've got the Moroccan spice falafel coming along the conveyor belt here, being packaged up. Uh, Nicolette and Tissa and E there, uh, busy at work this morning. And in recent years, we've seen a rising demand for meat alternative and vegan products. But we've now seen that dip, uh, in part because of the cost of living crisis. The Latest figures show that spending on meat alternative products was down by £40 million last year compared with the year before. And uh, the producers, uh, as a result, have cut back on production. And you'll find fewer items on the shelves of the main four supermarkets. The Vegan Society says the cost of living crisis means people feel that many of the products are just too expensive. We've been speaking to people in London about their shopping habits. Some of the and the or the vegan products are are not great and they're not very tasty. Some are pretty good. If the quality was better, I would eat more. I think it is more sustainable to use more beans in our diet and more natural produce, and that makes more sense to me than to buy more processed things that are marketed specifically for vegans. With the vegan ready-made stuff. There are things that I will buy and I don't buy, and I think the cost of living definitely um, is weighs heavily on that. Well, I still live with my parents, and they're all my parents and my sister are all vegetarian, so I'm eating vegetarian and vegan products a lot. We try out different brands. You know, it's getting closer because to meat. You know, I still eat meat, so I I can tell more than them. But uh, no, I mean, I honestly, the only thing I think that's keeping me eating meat is that sometimes it's just a bit cheaper, you know, than the okay. vegan stuff. So what future then for meat alternative and vegan products? We can speak to Morgan, who's a food futurologist. Do you think then what we saw in recent years was a fad that people are now turning away from? I think it's just a blip. You know, a lot of things happened during COVID that were really unprecedented. And I think that people were cooking more at home and had more time to prepare things. So they also started reading the labels more. There were a lot of new people trying to make maybe meat alternatives with ingredients that weren't that great. I think consumers responded to that. But I think there are still lots of opportunity in that space. There is lots of opportunity. And I think it's just the beginning of really the plant-based innovation that we're going to see in the future. So where people have been giving up those products or switching away from them, do you think it's just because of the high price? I don't think it's just because of the high price. I think that people are also re-evaluating how they want to eat. But also, you know, really being aware of what they're putting in their bodies and just because it may be plant-based or vegan doesn't necessarily mean it's healthy. And I think that's why consumers are looking to more vegetable-led or, or ingredient-led that they can recognise. Uh, and then in terms of people's reasons for opting for meat alternatives, presumably for some people it's the sustainability as well as the health factors. Absolutely. Sustainability, it's air miles, it's seasonality, it's, it's a combination of factors and I think just to say, oh, that the vegan fad is over, I think is short-sighted because like I said, I think it's a combination of things but we have got a big future ahead for plant-based foods. Okay. Well, again, thank you very much for uh, giving us your insights and uh, as I say, it's uh, uh, it's been a busy morning at the factory. They started here nice and early. Uh, as you see, the conveyors, there's nothing left on them. They're all on boxes on their way out. But that's it from us here this morning. OK, Ben, thank you very much indeed. Thanks for